Right, so I can't remember where I got up to last time, but I've completed the um, the chassis uh, building uh, construction, and we moved on to chassis the chassis wiring. Now, what I've actually done is um, I didn't actually film any of it because I was uh, I got a bit stuck in, but I've gone through chassis wiring, um, gone through all the stages. Should be another page, and I've got to this last step here. So I'm about to start the circuit board wiring, but I'll show you where we're up to with the actual um, oscilloscope. So I've um, made all the connections, fitted the transformer, and um, done all the wire connections. Because of the um, the, the way I did the sockets, the uh, the uh, filter caps. You can see that actually some of the connections um, aren't the best, but it's just the way it's come out. Um, we can spin it over. And here's that section here. Um, got to cut that wire off. But here's the back panel with the components fitted. Um, still got these to wire in. So that comes later on. Uh, and I've got everything sorted there, so we should be able to. Um, this is actually a, um, a selenium rectifier, but it all seems to be okay at the moment. So um, we tested it; all seems fine. I'll keep it in there, but if we need a replacement, I will do. There goes the dog. And so uh, the two caps that were in here, or test them on the tester later on, but they were. Um, both massively leaky. I mean, they're a thousand volt rated caps, and both of them are leaking at 150 volts. So they're definitely replacing. But we will look at those. Um, so there we go. So that's really where we're at, starting to look a bit like an oscilloscope. So the next section is the. Um, we're going to start wiring up the uh, the circuit board itself. Um, and I've got to go through this diagram here, fitting all the components. Now, because the board already has its components fitted, here it is. I've actually got to go through and measure them all and replace the ones that need replacing. So, um, that's the next step. Okay, so all of the um, underboard wiring is done. Um, it consisted of um, doing the heater wiring, which was I left in place, so I just needed to connect it up um, and do all of the um, wires from the filter caps onto the board and to the front sockets. Now, the, the layout diagram is a bit of a mess, and there's no optimum way to run some of these wires for a, a neat lead dress. Um, and I really couldn't find a way of keeping these wires any shorter without um, doing as I've done here. Um, which is a bit annoying because I like to be neat, but that's pretty much what I'm working with. Um, two caps connecting from one from the rotary switch to the board and the other from the um, vertical input socket, red socket, to the board as well. Um, just see what I've done there. Right, so that's it really. The next stage is wiring above the chassis. So I'm going to have to um, uh, go through that next. Okay, so here's the board. I've um, be this way around. I've gone through and I've replaced pretty much all of the components. And here's all the resistors. Now, none of these were within 10% of their um, of their value. I know some of them are 20% resistors, but they were way, way out. And even with a 20% resistor, I still like to be within 10 um, as a minimum. So they've all gone. Here's all the caps. There was this... Uh, Capacitor here. Um, it was leaking at 25 volts. We, I will show you all the uh, the leakage tests. The two 16 microfarad electrolytics uh, were leaky, and these three moulded caps as well. So if we look at the board, um, 
the three one two three tropical fish caps um we're all good no leaks they're rated at 250 volts and they are they are good up to that voltage so they can stay and the th the other disc caps all test good as well which is great what's wrong with the focusing on this today here we go so i've gone through replaced all of the um all the bits and bobs i've left the heater wiring on the other side that cap tests okay too um so that is now done so the final section or is to refer to the fold-out pictures and place the circuit board in position on the chassis with v2 nearest the front panel so here's v2 so that goes nearest the front panel Secure using eight screws, lock nuts and lock washers with a two-way tack strip at TF. Ensure that no part of the copper foil is in contact with the chassis. Okay, so where is TF? Here's TF. So we've got to fit a, um, uh, a terminal tack strip there. And I believe I've got one left. So that will be that one there. Perfect. Okay, so that's um. Here's the chassis down there. We'll get that, and then we'll get cracking. There you go. Circuit board in. Easy as that. Right. So, the next step is wiring below the chassis. Refer to pictorial th pictorial three. No pictorial. I was right in the first place. Here it is. For the following steps. And I'm just going to work my way through wiring up the, um, well, up to this point, and then we'll see where we get to. I think we've actually got another page and a half before we move to wiring above the sh chassis. So I may just work my way through and report back when I get to this section. But it's starting now to look like an oscilloscope. Brilliant. Okay, right, so I've actually forgot to do a lot of filming um, because I've just carried on um, and finished the wiring of the oscilloscope. Um, I just forgot to uh, stop and press record at some point. So all the wiring is done as I've mentioned before, what I've noticed about this kit in particular, I don't know about the other Heath kits, but they are extremely difficult to get a neat lead dress. Um, I don't know how important the lead dress is, but I found that the way it's laid out, you can't really route the wires so they look nice and neat like I can do in a guitar amplifier. Um, but it's all done anyway. Um, I finished all the wiring and so the next step is on this page is final assembly where I've got to fit the valves and the uh, the voltage selection fuse which is always done I've got to go through all of this fit all the knobs on the front I've already got the test lead sorted so I can move on to test and adjustment um, but first of all I'm just gonna get these knobs on Okay, so with all the knobs installed and the valves in as well, I think we are ready to go. So I've completed the final assembly and we're moving on to test and adjustment. Caution, the voltages in the instrument are dangerous. Extreme care should be exercised whenever the instrument is connected to the AC mains without being installed, without being installed in its cabinet. Do not connect the mains lead to an AC outlet until you have read and understood the following instructions on testing the scope. Some of the adjustments which must be made on this instrument cannot be formed with the cabinet in place. Whenever the oscilloscope is operated without the cabinet, be sure to remove the mains lead from the outlet before attempting to change position of the oscilloscope on the bench. Okay. Some of the highest voltages in the circuit appear on the brilliance and focus control terminals. Brilliance and focus control, so those two pots near to the edge of the panel. 
it is easy to touch one of the terminals when moving the oscilloscope. So, fingers away from this side. Right. Set the controls as following before connecting the mains cable. Uh, brilliant. Fully anti-clockwise. Fine frequency, fully anti-clockwise. Fine frequency, fully anti-clockwise. Vertical gain, horizontal gain, fully anti-clockwise. Vertical gain, horizontal gain, fully anti-clockwise. Vertical position, center of rotation. Horizontal position, center of rotation, pointing up. Horizontal frequency selector, fully clockwise. Focus, center of rotation. So that's center. Astigmatism, center of rotation and vertical int internal external set to internal so then you need to set the switch here to internal and we need to set this pot to the center of its rotation that's fully left that's fully right so it's going to be about there, isn't it? Oh, I don't know actually. There to there. Maybe it's about there. About there. Okay. Right. Let's pop it back then. Connect the mains cable to an AC outlet. Well, I've got it plugged into my light bulb limiter here. Turn the brilliance control fully clockwise. This will apply power to the oscilloscope. All valves should glow. Allow one minute for the valves to warm up. So, um, first things first, make sure the switch is off. I'm going to do my own safety check. The switch is off. I'm going to hit the, the bulb, make sure there's no short. If it lights up fully or even comes on at all, we know there's a short. No, good. Now, Turn it fully clockwise. Okay. And now we can turn the bulb on. Watch the screen of the CRT until a spot appears. Okay. So let's try it on. Bulb came on and it dimmed down. We're hoping that it doesn't light up fully. So the indicator light is on, you can see valves warming up, there's no smoke, bulb is still, bulb came on, but no, it's not on fully, which is good. I don't see any smoke, I can't smell anything. I'm waiting for a spot to appear on the screen. Can I see all the valves are lighting up? Yes, it appears they're all lighting up. No spot on the screen though. So I've got a creaky chair here today. Nada, nothing. Right. If no, if no spot appears, can you see that? Rotate both the horizontal position and vertical position of simultaneously until a spot appears. If a spot cannot be located, refer to in case of difficulty section. Push this button back a bit. Set the camera 
camera up so you can see. So what was it, the horizontal and vertical position, these two. No spot. Hmm. What have I done wrong? If no spot appears, oh no, we've done that. If the spot cannot be located, refer to the in case of difficulty section of the manual. Now, could it be that it's not lighting up because we're on restricted power? Let's turn you off. Here I've got a power meter, so we can set, see the wall voltage today is 241.6 volts. Um, I can view, I can watch how much current is being pulled. Let's connect in there. Turn it on again. Three, two, one. So it's pulling 100, 200 milliamps. 240 milliamps, 244 milliamps. So it's pulling less than an amp. Why has come on? There's no smoke. Still 242, and that equates to 56 watts. There's no spot on the CRT. Why is there no spot on the CRT? Right. So let's just, for safety, plug it back into the light bulb. Turn it on. Okay, so something's gone wrong somewhere. Something has gone wrong somewhere. What could have gone wrong somewhere? In case of difficulty, let's find that section then. In case of difficulty, one, we recheck the wiring. Trace each leading coloured pencil on the pictorial as is checked. It is frequently helpful to have a friend check your work. Someone who's not familiar with the unit may notice something consistently overlooked by the constructor. Okay, number two, ninety-seven percent of the kits are returned for repair. Do not function properly due to poor connections and soldering. Check that all the valves are in their place. Check the valves with the valve tester, we've done that. Check the value component parts, well we've done that. Check for bits of solder, blah blah blah. Check the voltage readings against those found in the schematic diagram. So, no spot or trace. Remove vertical output valve V6 and V6 A and B. If spot appears, check vertical circuit voltages. Okay, so we've got some checks to do. Problem is, I can't see if the CRT is... Um, Is lighting up so we've got some checks to do okay so it's getting late in the day so I'm gonna stop here before I electrocute myself um, and we'll start our troubleshooting in the next video thanks for watching